Welcome to Expedition Self on Ohm Times Radio with lifelong learner, entrepreneur, and creator of the worlds of Expedition Self, Sam Parado. Sam shares four decades of studying, guiding, and teaching how to go inside so we can build an incredibly powerful, dynamic, and validating relationship with the self. Expedition Self is laced with stellar, unexpected insights about what it means to be human. Listen now and ignite your self-development process with Sam Parado. Hello, I'm Sam Parado, and I am your host for Expedition Self. I'm so glad you're here, uh, specifically today, because this is going to be a special, special show. Uh, It's dedicated to Dublin and Diesel and all of my friends who have uh, parted uh, with their beloved uh, animals and pets over the last year or two. And there are many from horses to cats, to dogs, to chickens, to rabbits. Um, And so, but but particularly, uh, and I think I mentioned this on a show or two before, but over the last two weeks, two of my very special friends had to say goodbye to their best friends. And I wanted to spend, to send special prayers and love and gratitude to Dublin and Diesel and their families. And also I wanted to give you an opportunity to take a moment to, t- to send uh, some of that <laughs> to uh, one of your uh, friends or pets uh, who you've had that soul, soul connection with. And today in particular, I, I, as before I got on the show, I found myself feeling kind of nervous because I always feel like words don't do justice uh, to whatever someone's experiencing when they're actually in the throes of the loss. So I hope that I do it justice today. Um, the, the show is about hellos and goodbyes. Uh, um, and so this is part of it, but it also will talk about growth work uh, as we go through uh, later, some of the later pieces. And uh, it certainly will talk about how we might relate to hellos and goodbyes in general. So um, as, as we go through today, I'm going to share a couple of excerpts from the eulogies that were written. Uh, for Dublin and for Diesel. But just to kind of give you a little bit of sense, Dublin's owner, uh, his name is Scott, and he writes a beautiful blog called Fly, Fish, Mend. And each week he integrates meaningful and insightful human reflections into his experience with fly fishing. And over the years, his love for Dublin has just felt so uh, real and viscerally moving uh, from the moment he got him, that uh, when he had to say goodbye to him on Sunday, I felt his loss uh, in my own way too. And so even though I've never met Dublin personally, um, you know, I I think that we can all connect to what it's like to say, uh, to have to uh, have that animal, that pet, that friend of ours uh, leave our space. So anyway, I encourage you to check out his blog because it's very unique and personal and genuine and so in sync with what we do here on Expedition Self. And then with Diesel, uh, Diesel was a rescue dog brought home by Susie uh, 12 or 13 years ago. And I got the honor of being the first one he wagged his tail for (laughs) after a month of uh, trying to acclimate into her very, very... uh, big hearted, loving family. And um, he has greeted me as his aunt at his door, at her door ever since. And so I experienced both the love that surrounded him in every moment, and the love that he never withheld, as well as, you know, the emptiness that now exists after his passing. I was also uh, privileged to be present at the moment that he left his physical form. And I was also there for his service. So I have a very personal connection to Diesel. I, I know that there, I really believe that there are very few people who don't have an experience of this soul connection with some animal or pet. And, and so I hope you'll see this conversation today as both a tribute to the gift they are to all of us and a learning about hellos and goodbyes 
And uh, perhaps you'll return to, and this is, I want you to be open, right? Because with growth work, we always want to invite in whatever it is that actually shows up. So you may have a pain or a sad memory that wraps around your pet. And I'd encourage you to allow it to just be during this hour that we're spending today. And of course, maybe you have you find yourself just envisioning all the moments and the hours that you spent together. But whatever it is, whatever it is, it's important that you just let yourself be with it. And of course, the whole hour uh, has, has some intellectual material laced into, I think, the emotional undertone uh, that I hope to be setting right now. So uh, I want you to remember this is a call-in show, and I welcome you to call in today if you have something you'd like to share or add to our conversation. So the number is 202-570-7057. So as part of um, getting started, I would like to read to you uh, a couple of paragraphs um, that Scott wrote uh, in his eulogy about Dublin in his in his blog post or in his blog. Okay, I imagine this is in Scott's voice. <laughs> as a blended family, as much as we try to the contrary, it's very difficult to have things that we all share and connect with the same way. But with Dublin, he was our family member. All seven of us had him as ours. He came into our lives at a time as we were moving into a new space, building new traditions, and finding our ways of relating. The change we were going through and the adjustments our children had to make were monumental for us all. Even now, our attempts to connect and relate to each other rarely result with us all going in the same direction but he brought us together better than we could on our own. And I hope this memory can hold the bond he gave us. He also showed me how to be with my family in a more connected way. Mainly through work settings, I had, I had developed a skill of reading situations and finding the right words to keep things moving, you know, make a technical point or to win more work. And I, I overused that skill. This is Scott speaking. As a dad, and especially a stepdad, fancy pep talks just didn't resonate with my audience and my words could be heard with a skeptical and bored, if not distrustful, interpretation. Dublin, Dublin showed me the value of presence without words. Being present is often what is needed to create a loving, safe space, to be heard to be seen and to be hugged. It tells more to those I love than any words I can muster. Be present and listen more, say less. That simple lesson helped me get closer to all of my children and without Dublin's example, sinking in via osmosis, I may be still struggling by offering advice that is uninvited or continually putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> he says, the kids may still think I do this, but I try. And so I start today's uh, talk about this because animals are our teachers. And there's just nothing to be said that doesn't validate that as a truth. And of course, they have a way because they don't speak words. That relationship just wraps around them in the most unexpected moments and, and they help to heal spaces where, where people need them most. And, and so, you know, when I think about hellos and goodbyes, and I think about the goodbyes that uh, were wrapped around Dublin and Diesel in the last two weeks, um, I, I find myself really thinking about hellos and goodbyes in our whole lives and what the lessons even in the goodbyes are when we feel so much loss and sadness. So... I want to just dive in uh, to today's conversation. And in this moment, I just want to, I want you to imagine that I'm, I'm drawing a line, uh, an energetic line right across this, this, the sound of my voice. And I'm going to start by actually saying some words. And I want you just to put yourself in the space of these words, which is, is kind of a shift from where I just was uh, talking about uh, or reading you uh, Scott's writing. Okay, here's the line. Here we go. Hello, 
Hello, welcome. You're invited. I'm so glad you're here. Come on in. We're open. We're open for business. I'm open to you. Think of the feeling you get when you say the word hello or welcome. And this is the place to start as we think about beginnings and endings. What does it feel like in your body to welcome something or someone? I can tell you that what happens for me is that my lungs relax and then expand. It's like my heart opens and my shoulders get wider when I say, welcome. And usually there's a smile on my face to go with it. My body, my whole body becomes more available and my, my thoughts are open to make room for whatever it is I'm inviting into my space. Whoever it is I'm inviting into my space. And although, you know, this can be applied to how we welcome ideas, today I'm going to really be talking about physical changes like the tangible things, you know, that enter and leave our lives. So that's people or changes of addresses or the day moving into one phase of life from one phase into it, uh, from life. Uh oh, I just got my tongue twisted up there. Okay, so I'm just trying again, moving from one phase of life into another, like leaving a job, you know, these kinds of things, right, that, 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 that you actually experience your body moving through them. And although I, I did a show on transitions, I, I, I wanted to zero in a bit more uh, around the loss the hoarding, the need filling, right? The seduction that accompanies our hellos and goodbyes in this conversation. And I may not get to all of it, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see how it shapes up. Okay. So let's get back to this feeling of welcoming or opening to something or someone in our lives. So this opening is a choice. Now it can be unconscious or conscious, <laughs> but what I can say is that when you open, you're letting in the thing that you can identify, right? The thing that you say, that's what I'm opening to. I'm opening to getting this new job or I'm opening to the new day or I'm opening to uh, welcoming home a new pet, right? You're, you're opening to that, but then you're also letting in mischievous monkeys, bears that play with power and butterflies, and they come with it, and those you don't necessarily see or can't know, other than what your experience, you know, brings to bear that you you are bringing forward to this moment. So, all right, so let me explain this a bit. You're probably like, what is she saying about bears and butterflies uh, and monkeys? <laughs> so, you have a bunch of empty buckets swimming around inside of you. Buckets don't swim. Okay, floating, floating around inside of you. And these empty buckets are looking for contents, for a filling, for batting, for resolution, or for some, they're seeking something, right? They're looking to match up. So when you say, hello, <laughs> the the keepers of these buckets, right? The, the, the what do I want to say? The genius of the bucket takes notice. And, and they begin to listen and collect whatever it is that they need. So that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how these things are inside of us. And although we're saying yes to something or we're welcoming something, that all of this is running around in the backgrounds behind the scenes. And that it's actually listening to the words being said and deciding what fits and what doesn't. And these, what's in these buckets is is actually collecting, right? And and it's it's rejecting and it's deciding. Oh yeah, this is something I can open to or will be of use to me, or this is something that actually won't. So the opening is made larger when we feel safe with the person or the thing that we're welcoming. So a pet, 
really fits into this category. We, we feel so safe with our pets for the most part. You know, they give unconditionally and we are the center of their worlds and they provide a whole lot of sensory cof- comfort without ever lifting a finger. So we don't go into those relationships in a guarded way. We love and open easily. We don't see the future pain we might feel when losing them, you know, because we're completely consumed by what's provided in the moment. And there are so many parts of us that are filled by them. And and so this is something I just want you to think about is when your hello is, is really wrapped around the idea that something is so safe, it's so welcome, it's so comfortable, it, it's so enticing, right? That that makes it easy. It makes it easy to say hello. It makes it easy to welcome welcome them in. All right, when we come back from break, I'm going to read um, a piece of Susie's uh, eulogy to Diesel that really talks about that for you. Right, when we come back from break, I'll be reading a piece from uh, Susie wrote to Diesel. All right, well, at the moment, it seems like break isn't quite happening. (laughs) So uh, I'm going to keep talking here, um, and I'll actually read it to you now. So here we go. Now, this is not in my voice. Imagine uh, this is uh, someone you picture as Susie. So... The comfort you brought to my life is unlike any I have known, unique to you. I loved holding your face in my hands and kissing you over and over and over. Your smell, your soft fur, this tactile experience brought so much inner peace to my often on alert way of being. You spoke to me more with your eyes than you did with your barking. Having you next to me to share an apple, be at my side as I mourned the loss of my parents, sit with me while I played my guitar and sang and wrote songs and did work on my laptop and read and watched TV and slept and cried during poignant phone calls and Zoom sessions. All of this was such a gift of companionship. With you in my life, I would never know loneliness. I would always know unconditional love. I'm reading these for you to to really as a tribute because I wanted to put the words out into the world on behalf of uh, Susie's family and Scott's family and Diesel and Dublin. But I'm also reading them to you because I want you to notice how you open inside of them, that you become welcoming. All right. At this moment, I'm going to see if we can go for a break again. And when we come back, we'll go uh, on in our conversation. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at omtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's not excited excited for for summer summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's having having a hard time time landing a job and getting back on his feet? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. 
I am hunger in America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. All right, we are back. I am Sam Parado. You're listening to Expedition Self. And today we're talking about hellos and goodbyes. But in particular, we're dedicating the show uh, to Dublin and uh, Scott's family and Diesel and Susie's family and all of those, all of you who have uh, said goodbye to pets, uh, animals and friends, um, you know, that's coming present for you as you listen to me talk. So uh, before we went to break, I talked about the the one kind of a welcome that uh, we'll find ourselves is when we feel so safe, right? Like this idea that there's just so much comfort that's going to be coming with the thing that we're welcoming. But another kind of welcome we'll find ourselves in that causes us to be more open is the one that we sought because we wanted a change, Uh, like moving into a new home that's better in some way than the last one, or getting a new job because we didn't like it, our last one, or grew tired of it, or could make more money. Or when when we want to welcome something new, we're opening the heart more. Our welcome is bigger. And so this is the thing, more of our monkeys, bears and butterflies, or butterflies and bears are going to be flooding the exchanges because of it. And so when I say monkeys, butterflies and bears, I'm really talking about these deeper places inside of ourselves. Like, um, you know, to me, monkeys make mischief. So they're always, you know, looking for something to play with or stir up. And of course, butterflies is, are that they represent to me like the places we want love and joy and, and, and that amazing unconditional love. And then of course, bears are looking at what's happening in the power dynamic here, <laughs> you know. So I, you know, along this line about when we wanted to change is I, I think about when I moved out of this condominium I lived in for eight years. And it was partially below ground and it was kind of small and I, I never painted the walls or decorated it. And the kitchen was mostly in a closet. So I'm just going to tell you straight out here, I didn't want to move into it to begin with. <laughs> so when I finally got to move out of it, you can imagine the welcome I gave to my new digs, like the joy and the glee that I felt. So on moving day, I got to the new house first, and I walked through all the rooms, you know, and just took in the height of the ceiling and the openness of the kitchen. I cannot describe the euphoria I felt. And so I I found myself in the corner of one of the rooms, and I nestled down Uh, onto my bottom, sitting on the floor in the corner. And I I could see like almost every room in the house from the spot. And I just sat there and took it all in. I, I felt like I arrived, like I would be content for the rest of my life in this place. And I was sure (laughs) that I was that all my monkeys and bears and butterflies needs were going to be met because I got to live there. It was so huge. I mean, that was a full all out welcome, right? And every need of my life was poised at that very same moment. I had the same euphoria when I welcomed my son into the world, even though you know he was taken immediately to the NICU, right? At least he was here. He had arrived and I wanted him. And it was like, that welcome was like, he is here. I'm, I'm so glad. Now, I don't, I'm hoping this is kind of connecting for you because I'm trying to help you think about what happens in your hellos. So then there are the hellos that we do because things just enter our lives, right? In a family, someone gets involved with, you know, a new partner, a mate, right? At a job, we get a new coworker, or maybe our children move from middle school to high school, And, you know, we have a whole new community that we work with and a whole new set of guidelines and rules. You know, we have to acclimate in some way to something new. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is that these hellos are going on all of the time. And not all of them include this idea of want or this idea that you're going towards comfort and safety. 
And, and so to me, this category of hello, it means that there's these various levels of defensive self-protection that may accompany your hello, right? Like a reserved quality, a holding back, um, uh, an assessing thing that might happen. And of course, depending upon how much you want that thing or person that's knocking on your front door, uh, metaphorically speaking, of course, it will, it will dictate how much you try to hold your inner tribe of stuff back. And I'm calling your inner tribe in this moment, uh, the monkeys, butterflies, and bears. And, and so I, I want to tell you about when I think of hellos, and really, I almost can't talk about hellos in general without thinking about this. I think about Diana, um, my colleague and, and soul sister. And, you know, I just want to tell you about her. It, it didn't matter what was going on or who arrived when we were together or even how late it was or how early it was. You know how some people say, I'm not a morning person, just get your coffee. <laughs> you know, no, no, this is not true of Diana. If someone walked into the space, she would get up from whatever she was doing and literally open her arms and her hello. <laughs> the O oh, was this big wide space of want and welcome. And I'm so glad you're here, you know? And, and when you, you talk about, how disarming that was to my self defenses, my buckets, you know, my my bunk, my monkeys, butterflies, and bears would all start to rattle and <laughs> tinkle because my needs, right, would all be so touched by that. It was just experience. It is so genuine and pure and intentional. And she gave it to everyone. There was no oh, some people got it because she liked them better, and other people didn't. You know, my monkeys had no need like to say, well, did you see what she did? Oh, well, how come she did that? Because that's what monkeys do, right? They second guess everything and they critique it and they play games trying to get everything stirred up. And my bears, my bears saw no threat, right? And my butterflies, well, they were treated with such gentle care. It was as if someone just opened the window and let them fly out. And of course, what was amazing is, and I'm going to say this again, because I just said it now, I have to say it again, is that it didn't matter who she was saying hello to, right? The same melting and expanding of my heart happened no matter who she said it to because she was fully in her hello. She was fully in her hello. So um, in this moment, I'm, I wanna kind of turn us back. I wanna share with you something else that uh, Scott wrote to Dublin that I think you know, helps us think about what this is uh, with our pets. And I'm trying to figure out how to describe this, what I'm trying to help you do today, which is to take these experiences that you have probably felt with your own pets and think about them in terms of how you embody them in yourself. So um, th this, is this, this is what Scott had to say about Dublin's joy at seeing them. So here it is. When he hadn't seen the kids for some time, the excitement of seeing them would induce a butt run. With lightning quick feet and lowered hips, he'd bounce through the house like a pinball, and we'd clap and celebrate his sudden expression of welcoming joy. So when you think about being that, you know, that, like that we have a hello going on all the time and that we can start to notice whether that hello feels like Dublin's greeting of the kids or Diana's greeting of anyone in her life. We are able then to start to discern inside of ourselves more, Right? More about what's happening, more self-awareness, more material to say what's happening, what's happening with my buckets. So the thing about hellos is that you're doing them all the time. And you can pay attention to the degree to which you open as a way of getting insight into yourself. You can notice how safe and wanting you feel with these hellos. You can, you can pay attention to what causes you to be more welcoming. Hellos provide awesome growth material. <laughs> I'm saying it like four different ways. Just think about it right now. What have you said hello to in just this day? The morning, your family, 
the people on the train, a new project, the food you eat, your body, or a change in your routine. Remember I said we're doing physical things. And you can see how this conversation is closely linked to how we deal with change, right? Because to really notice your relationship to hello, you'd have to be recognizing that there's some kind of change happening. And I, I just think that hello brings you to a place where you can actually see how much is changing even in a routine to life. When you wake up, you're leaving sleep. When you walk into the kitchen and say hello to your child, you're leaving solitude. When you take a shower, you're leaving the air in some way. When you get in your car, you're leaving solid ground. You can't say hello without saying goodbye. When you're heading home, that means you left work. When you go on vacation, that means you're leaving the safety and comfort of your own home. You can fill in these blanks, right? You can do that. If I'm leaving this, I'm going to that. There are hellos and goodbyes going on all the time. And when you throw in big changes to the mix, your bucket of monkeys, bears, and butterflies are dealing with all of this too. And the thing about the idea that we're dealing with hellos and goodbyes is that that's training for us. That's actually how we get up and underneath our humanness, right? And we learn how to be with our feelings and we learn how to be with this idea of holding on to life and letting go of life, which I believe at, at underneath all things is something we're grappling with in every minute of every day. I used to, I used to take my son to say goodbye to his school. And, and we would spend this bit of time saying goodbye, right, to the school year. So we'd go and we'd, we'd be on the swing set and we'd just spend an hour or two and, and we would walk over to the door and say goodbye door <laughs> and goodbye, goodbye favorite tree, goodbye favorite uh, hiding spot. And uh, just to help make it conscious and bring it present. Because the idea was that when it was time to go to a new school, right, it would help him to actually be ready to say hello. And so we would go to the new school and walk around and notice things, things that he hadn't yet come into relationship with. I believe, I believe so deeply that this was helpful and bringing his buckets, right, the monkeys and bears and butterflies into a more fully aligned and engaged and present awareness. It helped him learn how to deal with goodbyes and hellos. And I believe that this is at, in, in many ways, it's so central to how we evolve as, as people, right? Because we are going to go through so many goodbyes and hellos. So you don't know what they're wanting and needing in a hugely conscious way. So you, you don't know how all of that is going underneath the surface, right? And, and so when I keep calling them uh, monkeys and butterflies and bears, I, I want to now direct us to the five core needs of being, which I've, I've done a show on. In fact, I think I did two shows on this. So we can presume that any one of these changes, even the one which has to do with getting out of bed, and uh, getting in the shower will trigger our, our, our needs, right? But so we might trigger our safety need, which is one of the core needs, right? Either our need for routine will be met or our change in routine will be uncomfortable, right? So when I get out of bed, I am disrupting my need for safety because I'm very safe in that bed. We can see that our need to feel valued, that's the second need, is, is probably at play because whatever we're going towards is either enhancing or diminishing this, right? I see this a ton with clients who are so frustrated when they don't make progress in a meeting. You know, their sense of value like takes a beating. So they then, they don't want to say hello to that meeting the next time it's scheduled. It didn't get them what they were looking for. 
another need is to be loved, right? And the thing, this one's big, right? Because this one, it covers a bunch of the inner buckets. You know, the one that's hoping to find it, the one that's bitter and hurt, the one that's scared to feel hurt about things, the one that's cynical and resigned about it. So our need to be loved is always at play in the background when we're saying hello. Almost like some buckets hide, some buckets of love peek around the corner, and some buckets step right up and say, fill me, yeah, let, let here I want it, right? So I have uh, another uh, piece of Scott's writing to Dublin about this. He intuitively found the right times to lick your face or push his head between your legs for you to give him some good scratches. When any of us hugged, he would come to make sure he wasn't forgotten in the embrace. He came to the door to say hi when we all approached with a wagging tail and a warm smiling eyes, encouraging any stress from the outside to leave itself at the door. He'd push his way onto a chair or couch just to be near us. A myriad of images run through my mind with each of us sitting on Dublin's love seat, leaning against him as we sit in the family room. So our need to be loved, right? It really is always at play. And it's so hard to say goodbye to something that is filling all of that for us and to say hello to the next moment. All right, I think we're at time for break again. And um, when we come back, we've got two more needs to talk about. And um, then we'll see, we're gonna kind of move into some of the things about the goodbyes. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. OM Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk Walk a mile mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. We are back. I'm Sam Parado, and you are listening to Expedition Self today. And our topic is hellos and goodbyes, but we are particularly dedicating today to uh, Dublin and Diesel uh, and the families of Susie and Scott. So uh, before we went to break, we were talking about the core needs, and I said five core needs. So the fourth core need is our need to be acceptable, which basically means that walking out the door in the morning is equivalent to going fishing. How will I find it? Will they be biting? Will I catch any, right? And then the next need is the need to be worthy. And of course, that's a bigger and deeper bucket, but it is actually collecting data all of the time about whether or not we get to end each day feeling worthy or not worthy. So when Diana greets people, she actually touches all of those buckets, all five, right, of those needs. It's an amazing feat. Right? But she is able to cause each one to fill or feel a bit more filled or at least or at least contacted. 
when I when I took my son to the school to say goodbye, we were looking at those needs processed through the school year. And that's what we talked about. So hello is a state of being. And it, it represents the front door of you. And the more you can distinguish and see how you're showing up at that front door and the parts of you that you're bringing with you, then the more conscious you'll become. So when a new puppy or kitty arrives, I can tell you that all, and I mean all of your buckets, are full tilt and ready to give it over. You see the prospect of love, of giving it and receiving it, even for the most wounded of us or the most jaded of us. It wants that door swung wide open and even even if we consciously try to protect ourselves, it just won't let it stay that way. So in many ways, our animals that we care for and make ours, they teach us this lesson of hello over and over. So if you focus on the quality of your hello and the consciousness of your hello, you'll find that there's a ton going on inside of you that's being made contact with. And this provides more of your sensory, emotional, and your whole self an outlet and a way to make contact with life. So as you can see with every hello, there's likely a goodbye. Hello to an animal friend means you're saying goodbye to staying in bed in the morning or some of your freedom. And so let's talk about goodbye because this one is interesting. It's when all of those buckets are triggered, but in a very different way because they're faced with having something taken away. And for many of the things in our life, we are filled by them. That's why they're in our life. They make life complete or whole. So our attachments, our holding on, our taking care of, our engaging with, our routines, our allowing them to be in our lives. This is because they fill something for us. So when they go away, well, we're going to feel the emptying of what is in them. We can't avoid it. Even things we're frustrated with, the monkeys, when they're gone or past, we will know it and we'll register it. So goodbyes take something from us. They do give us some things in there too, but but I want you to think of it in this light for now. So sometimes when a bucket that used to be filled with things we wanted begins to be filled with suffering or resentment or disconnect, well, we welcome the goodbye on first blush. But I have to tell you that I've never seen anyone leave a circumstance or disconnect from a person that they once felt joy with, that their buckets weren't filled at some point, that they didn't also then feel the emptiness, the nothingness, and the loss. I think it's important, you know, to note that when people or situations meet our needs, they aren't always causing joy. And this is very significant. Yeah, yeah, because I don't think we own enough that we are the source of what has anyone be in our life, that has anything we deal with, the needs that are being stuffed full are, are, are ours, whether there's joy or discomfort, whatever is happening in these situations, it's ours, they're our buckets. So somewhere between hello and goodbye, we're growing, whether we know it or not. Now, I'm going to get really ridiculous here, but I want to make this point that growth is happening whenever we leave something and say hello to something else because it represents movement in life. So when I get out of bed in the morning and I go to the kitchen and I say hello to my family, I'm moving and the buckets are being engaged and I'm saying goodbye to my sleep. And I have to tell you that one of the things I will miss most from this lifetime when I pass out of it is sleep. So each morning when I get out of bed, I don't want to leave my sleep. I love my dreams. I love the sheets on my skin. I love the feel of being heavy lidded. I love the peace and safety and sense of enoughness that I get there. And yet when I walk into the kitchen, I'm saying hello to everything. And that is the movement of life. So in a conscious way, I experienced the letting go of my bucket getting filled, right, with all that comfort and joy and safety in hopes that it would be filled in different ways as I go through my day. There have been times when my buckets didn't get satisfied and it was harder to leave my bed on those days. 
See, the way we fill ourselves up, this filling the buckets up with things that make us feel good, I think lots would call this the pursuit of happiness. This, I, I, I used to work with someone who told the story that the minute one, one cat, one beloved uh, kitten passed away, the next day the parents brought a new kitty and we actually ter termed it replacement kitty. So rather than being with the buckets and seeing what loss and emptiness felt like, they filled it as fast as they could. And this replacement kitty strategy is one of the things growth work would move you away from because truly being able to be uncomfortable, sad and grief stricken and unloved or unacceptable or unworthy or scared, it sends you into a lonely, empty nothingness. And those are the most powerful human experiences we can have power around. Because lonely, empty, and nothingness is a core state of being that produces an absolute sense of creative spirit, a personal power that is unarguable, and a place where there is no striving. It is the center of the universe that you embody. And yet most of our lives are spent rushing through our hellos and goodbyes to avoid it. I hope this is making sense that nothingness and being in it allows for something to emerge. Between goodbye and hello is nothing and emptiness. And so perhaps pets are here to teach us much about this and the many aspects of being human that occupy these in-between moments. They help us recognize our needs by meeting them so fully <laughs> so fully that there is no escaping the vacuum that remains when they move on from this life. So I'd like to read you the final words uh, that Susie shared with Diesel. And I might, I might not be able to get all the words out exactly because I'm feeling this big time. Diesel, our home feels barren right now. We miss you even more than we could have imagined. The grief is so acute and hard. I will love you forever in this lifetime as I have in past lifetimes and as I will when our souls reconnect in the future. Thank you for gracing me with your unconditional love and your precious trust. I hope you are out of pain, finding comfort and joy and feeling at peace knowing that you were the very, very best boy. Those were Susie's words. And now these are Scott's words to Dublin. Unconditional love is a rare gift. He gave it to us all and showed me that giving unconditional love is just a choice to express gratitude to someone who is willing to share themselves with you in whatever capacity they have available. That's enough for unconditional love. There is no scoreboard or expectation. I wish he was with me now. I want to hear his collar. I want to hear, I want him to be near the door, looking at me for a walk. I even like sweeping up all his hair off the floor daily even if his hair sent multiple vacuums to the landfill in short order. I want to reach out my hand and rub his ears next to me. But he's gone. I love him and miss him. He was with me and with us when we needed him most. He's the one who opened my heart and mind to mending and not fixing. So, so I hope that as we've talked about this today, I first want to say thank you to Scott and to Susie for allowing me to use their beautiful words uh, in this conversation. I also hope that you found yourself thinking about how open we are to our pets, but whether or not we have that same quality of opening and hello to other things in our life and the changes that go on. 
And the other piece about this is to really think about how we allow ourselves to settle deeply into the goodbyes, to allow ourselves to be with the nothingness, the void, the emptiness, and, and actually breathe into that. Because in that space is where all possibility, all possibility begins. And so I'm probably not going to use the whole hour today because I, don't, I really want you to be with the whole experience that I hope uh, you felt while we were together. But in closing, um, I hope you will drop into all of those buckets being filled every day between climbing out of bed and returning to it and to see all the growth moments lying dormant and waiting at, at the door for you to notice and let them in. And lastly, I want to say thank you uh, for your attention and your willingness to listen for this long <laughs> every week uh, to my show and to think about what does it mean to really go inside and to take that seriously, because we well know that the world needs more of us conscious and it's not an easy path to want to feel everything. Thank you so much and have a wonderful week.